Hey, hello everybody. You came back for the state program office updates. I'm so excited to share about the bureaucracy with you all. Um, so I'm gonna give some updates and then pass things over to Melanie to talk about TA, but I did wanna make sure to talk about our standards for certification revision process, which as I promised, I think you all are gonna get very sick of hearing about, but I wanna make sure to give you lots of updates and tell you about where we're at in the process. So um, the picture on the screen is um, from a team retreat that the state program office team did this past June. There were well, many post-it notes with stickies that went up on the wall. There was slideshows. There were lots of um, lots of discussion. Two days in a yurt in Portland. It was amazing. Um, but it was our time to come together as a team to start preparing for our certification standards revisions. And so a lot of thought and work has gone into it so far and we're excited to continue this process. And so just wanna give you an update on where things stand right now. So just for some background, as I think many of you know, it's been a long time since this document has been updated. I know, 2015 to 2016, some of you were part of that process. I was part of the process. It was great, but a lot of things have happened since then, and so it's definitely time to take a look at these and make some changes. Um, the goals of this revision process are to update areas that need clarification, align with best practice, center health equity and youth engagement. And so I think there's a lot of potential for things that could change, and I'm really excited to talk with you all about what that could look like. I think some of the things that we're thinking about in this discussion are like, you know, SBHCs are similar in a lot of ways to primary care provider, primary care clinics, behavioral health clinics, but what are, what are the things that make SBHC special and different from those clinics um, because of their location in the school, because of their ability to connect directly with young people? And so we're hoping to have the revised standards reflect that a little bit. So where have we been? Everything with the uh, thunder or the lightning bolt on there are things that we've, we have done in the past year to get us to this point. So, um, and I think I've shared this in the past, so um, hopefully it's not totally new, but um, starting, I think, over a, about a year and a half ago, our team completed a health equity tool as we went through the, pro to like, as we started the process to help us think through the steps that we needed to take in revising the standards. We did some background research. I think some of you probably got to talk with Sadie Siders, who was an intern that we had, who did some interviews with people, did a lot of background research and did clinical best practice, policy needs, um, hearing what young people are saying about school-based health centers. We had some youth feedback sessions in the winter of last year. We sent out a survey, which I think all of you completed um, to tell us what was working, what's not for the standards in your clinics. And then the sticky note yurt thing was when we came together to kind of draft a big picture model and kind of start to figure out what, how do we wanna reshape these standards and what should they look like. Um, and so I spent my summer vacation writing a document, a bureaucratic document, um, and, and mostly like keeping a lot of the same things, but making some revisions to our current standards. Um, and that this is kind of like our initial idea of what things could be that we want to bring to you all to get your feedback on. So what can you look forward to this school year? So um, we ha have our first work group meeting. We convened a work group. I think we have around 16 folks from across the state representing different agencies, um, different communities, backgrounds um, to come together to give us feedback on our initial draft. And so thank you to the folks who are in the room who have agreed to participate in this process. It's a big lift and we just really value your perspective and feedback as we move through this because I don't work in a school-based health center and you all know your communities and you know the work that you do. And so we really wanna get your feedback as part of this process and make sure that these changes are gonna be workable for you and reflect the needs that you see in your communities. Um, so we're gonna spend like the next year, the next school year going through and doing these work group meetings to take a look at the standards. And then the idea is 
we will have kind of a penultimate draft to share back with everybody and say like, here's what we're proposing, what do you think? And so we'll send out a survey and probably have some listening sessions in the spring to get your feedback on the draft that we put forward. And then at that point, since our program is written in statute, we'll have to go through a rules change process, so more, more bureaucracy, and then you'll have about a year to meet the new standards. Um, I will say as a caveat, this timeline is subject to change depending on how the work group goes, but this is our general plan right now. Um, another thing to mention is that um, in addition to our standards review work group, we're running to pull together an external partner advisory committee to help provide big picture guidance on the work that we're doing. So that would include partner agencies, other state agencies, um, and things like that to kind of give us a high level, high level feedback on the direction that we're going. Oh, and so the stars are, this is where we're at, review and edit the standards. So like I said, the work group is kind of like a big lift and um, you know, we have two hour meetings every couple weeks, which I know is just not feasible for everybody to participate in. And so um, we really wanna make sure that even if you can't participate in the work group, that there's opportunities for you to stay up to date with what's going on, um, have a chance to ask questions if you have them. So I will be putting in, uh, hopefully you all are subscribed to the State Program Office newsletter, but I will be putting in updates every two weeks about where we're at um, in the standards revision process, um, just so that there's full transparency about what's going on. Um, if you um, can't participate in our work group, our standards work group, um, we'd love to have you as part of our partner advisory committee, and more information is gonna come out about that, I think, next week. Um, and then we will do, like I said, a feedback survey in the spring on our proposed changes. We'll probably also do some listening sessions for folks to get your reactions to the, the changes that we're proposing. That was it. That was my bureaucratic moment. Any questions about any of this? Yeah. Uh, where, are my, where are my mic runners? Oh, the only thing is people on the Zoom can't hear. Uh, Rebecca's got it. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, oh, we have we have some assistance. Thanks. Um, this sounds great. I'm really interested in, I'm not committing to the work group, but I think the, the, the mission, <laughs> the mission um, of it is, is, really, um, is really nice to hear and important to kind of see where we can tap into our, what we bring unique, right, to healthcare. Um, and I, it made me think about a, um, a grant opportunity I saw with the National Institute of Health, mm -hmm. and it's looking at how school-based health centers advance health equity. Um, you know, those are really big lifts, those research grants. Um, I've never done one myself, but I've been, uh, you know, adjacent to one. Um, but I, I just thought it might be really interesting, because I know in conversations with Loretta that health equity is something that you're looking at um, how to incorporate in these new, um, you know, cr this new criteria. If something, and I haven't even read that grant uh, announcement that, that uh, well, but I just think it would be kind of cool if there were some way that uh, that could be done statewide somehow and involve some of our school-based health centers. And sounds like so you got Sarah's, Sarah's, all, Sarah's already like all over this. Up out of her chair. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex, you make a great plant. <laughs> um, we are lucky enough to be partnering with the Rand Institute, um, who just got a giant NIH grant to study school-based health centers in Oregon and California. They're looking at, um, they're going to be looking over since between 2011 and 2022, opening and closing of SBHCs, looking at the impacts on BIPOC populations in particular, but all youth and low-income youth, health outcomes and education outcomes. Um, so it's going to be, and we're going to partner with them and um, support them, and I think hopefully get to exactly what you're saying. So. 
did. We are pretty excited about that project. Any other questions before I hand things over to Melanie? Like I said, you're gonna hear from me so much, you're gonna be like, please stop talking about the standards revision, but that's all I have for now. Go ahead. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some upcoming uh, training and technical assistance opportunities. Can you hear me okay? Sorry, it was like feedback. Um, so basically, these training and technical assistance opportunities, we're working on spaces um, for you to connect throughout the year. Um, some of the activities we were doing here was kind of a, a, a start in that. Um, so at, in your packets, if you haven't looked through all of the tantalizing materials in there, um, there is a list of the SBHC training and technical assistance opportunities uh, throughout the next calendar year. There are dates and times on there. So um, if you wanna get ahead on your calendar for things that you know you wanna participate in, go ahead and block your calendar. Um, on that sheet, we have five open forums this year of some varying topics. The first one will be in November, focusing on school collaboration and partnerships, and the invitation will go out for that um, sometime next week-ish. Um, and then uh, Karen, Rebecca, and Loretta will continue their certification open office hours um, for all questions related to SBHC certification. Um, and then of course, our coordinators meetings are on there along with the annual KPM audit training, so you can kind of know when those things are happening. Um, we also have uh, a cultural responsiveness training series that we are in development on um, that is on the calendar. We're in the contracting process for right, with that right now, so I'm not anticipating any reasons why it wouldn't happen, but it's listed as TBD like because of that. Um, and then some things that we are working on um, for the future and potentially next year is a youth-led SBHC assessment learning collaborative. Um, so if we're able to make that happen, we'll likely give send out information about that um, later on in the spring. Yeah, that's it. It's gonna be a great year of TAT activities. Um, and then also I wanna make a plug um, for our resource table in the back. We had a lot of great partners um, provide information for the resource table, so if you haven't taken a look, um, we've got great tote bags back there that you can just fill up with all the goodies that you want. Um, so the Oregon Community Engagement Program, Youth Sexual Health Program provided stuff. We have things from the oral, or, uh, oral Health Program, the Reproductive Health Program, Oregon Department of Education, uh, the School-Based Health Alliance, Oregon School-Based Health Alliance, and Lines for Life. Um, and if you haven't seen it, Lines for Life Youth Line has um, a mini grant flyer out there, so there's a QR code. I would definitely take a look at that. It's it, There's a school-led, there's like a mini grant for more of like administrators, and then there's a youth-led mini grant. So take a look at that. Um, feel free to take a copy. And then we already have our four winners for SBHC Connect, but please keep using that as an, a way to chat with each other throughout the day. Yes, and um, we will be sending out a um, virtual resource list with the materials that will be sent out after the meeting's over, and that will include a lot of links to the materials that are on the resource table, including some materials that aren't on there, so special stuff coming up. Um, and then we'll include information on how to order more things if there's materials on that table that you would like more of or you want to learn more about their organization. We'll include that too. Yeah. Any questions on that? Okay. And just for, for the folks that won SBHC Connect, don't leave today because at the end of the day, is when you get your prize and some notoriety. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Okay, next we have the yep. Oregon School Based Health Alliance. Thank you. Yeah. 
Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Maureen Hinman. I'm the executive director of the Oregon School-Based Health Alliance. We are a nonprofit that works um, in many ways to advocate for, strengthen, um, sustain, support school-based health centers. Um, and I realized that I didn't put a slide in here with our team, but most of our team's here, so I'm going to put them on the spot and make them stand up really quickly so you can see who is on our team. Can we start with Patti? Patti Zavala is our youth programs manager. Um, Winsve Campos is our strategic initiatives manager. Um, Asia Gates, you already heard so many good things about her, is our youth engagement coordinator. Um, and then we have Hannah Smith, our school health analyst. Um, so just letting you know a couple of things. We'll start with our legislative agenda. So we are the ones that advocate um, to the legislature for school-based health center funding. And um, as you probably know, last year we advocated for additional funding for school-based health centers. And the legislature kind of imploded. And so not, like a lot of things didn't move forward, including our bill. So we're bringing it back this session. We're already having meetings with legislators, doing all sorts of advocacy. And we are, um, we are asking for four things. We're asking for an inflationary increase for school-based health centers. It's been, I think, um, since 2013 or so, since um, that happened last. And then we're also asking for that to be tied to inflation moving forward. So that happens. That happens with CCOs. That happens with other certain types of providers. And why doesn't it happen with school-based health centers? So um, we're going to try to make that happen. Um, the one that says SBHC school nurses is that we are asking for um, more planning grants, for um, 10 planning grants for communities uh, to plan for school health services, um, increased funding for school-based mental health, obviously needed, and then capital construction. Um, this kind of spells out more what they are, but it's kind of boring to look at compared to the other slides. So, um, but the capital construction is asking for some funding for pre-built modular clinics. Some people already have modulars that you work in, um, and some people know that maybe you've been in a district where it's taken like five years and a bonding process and all of this to be able to construct the school-based health center, and so we're trying to make it so that um, there are more possibilities um, for districts to get SBHCs faster. And as part of uh, our events, one of them is School Health Advocacy Day. Um, it is going to be February 15th this year. If you've participated in the past a long time ago, it was always at the Capitol. In recent years, of course, it's been online. This year, we're going to offer a hybrid version. So um, there is still construction happening at the Capitol. It's still not its old, beautiful self. But we've heard so much from youth every year. They're like, we want it to be in person that we're going anyway. So um, put that um, date on your calendar and get your yaks and shacks and, and other acronyms ready to attend. Um, and we'll send out more information about that. Um, and then our other event that we're going to be doing later this spring is um, our annual conference is back. So again, for those folks who've been around a long time, we used to have a, an annual school-based health center conference. Um, that went away for a while, but we're bringing it back, and we are making it all the better by combining it with our Youth Adult Partnership Conference, um, which we had last year, was the first year with, that we had it. Um, and it really ended up having a lot of really good material and sessions for and from school-based health center folks, and it just makes sense to combine them. And so um, that's going to take place at Oregon State University in Corvallis. Um, we're partnering with their public health folks there. Um, and it will be a two-day uh, event, and we are going to be putting out an RFP for your abstracts. So get your amazing projects in your head that you want to share and show off to the rest of the field. Um, and 
uh, we'll be asking for um, you to submit um, your abstracts for that. And this is just a reminder, um, we have a school-based health center marketing toolkit, and I don't know if everyone knows about it, but it has um, these materials on it. They're customizable. I was, I was pretty excited to see one of the youth's videos where they were putting up flyers on the lockers was these. Um, I was like, yes, somebody's using them. So, um, so you can make them say whatever you want, so if you're like, I'm in a rural community and this isn't gonna work for me, you can change something or, um, although we did get input from folks in rural communities, in urban communities, and in suburban communities, so um, hopefully these will be helpful. And I'm gonna let Hannah talk about membership because we now have a person, Hannah, that's specifically dedicated to supporting you all. Um, in addition to all of the other things that we do. So. Hi everyone, as a reminder, I'm Hannah Smith. I'm school health analyst with the Oregon School Based Health Alliance, she, her pronouns. It's very nice to see everyone here and online. Um, probably emailed with a lot of you, um, so it's nice to talk in person. Um, but as Maureen mentioned, we have re, um, reinvigorated our membership program this year to provide additional supports to you all in the field. So um, we still have the same option that we had previous years, which largely supports our advocacy efforts, um, and it's a way for you to be eligible for the grants that we give out. Some of the students before mentioned those um, on the panel and such. Um, but we have expanded the tiers to provide more technical assistance, to give you discounts to some of the events we mentioned, um, and to provide additional trainings. So um, again, tier one is supporting the advocacy efforts, um, and then tier two um, has tier one benefits as well as 20% discounts to our conferences and events for up to two staff members. And you can access quarterly trainings, um, consulting and site-specific technical assistance for up to five hours. And um, tier three is um, tier one benefits plus 20% discount to our conferences and events for up to four staff plus you get special SBHC recognition, um, you get access to quarterly trainings and unlimited webinars from the past. You also will have access to consulting and site-specific technical assistance for up to 10 hours, and we will also provide grant application consultation for external funding opportunities, because we know funding is something we all need. Um, continued, we also have individual memberships available for folks who are not in school-based health centers but are um, perhaps in education or other um, professionals who are working towards implementing additional school health services. Um, so you, those folks can access our quarterly trainings um, and a 10% discount to conferences and events. And then lastly, we have added a gifted membership for SBHC staff who identify as BIPOC or LGBTQ+. Um, and so this has all of the individual membership benefits um, plus quarterly affinity groups. We know that school-based health has largely been dominated by white cis women and that is changing and we wanna make sure that we um, reflect that in our options to support folks um, in the spaces that they need. So you may have gotten some emails from me earlier in the week. Um, all of this, all these options are reflected in those invoices, but feel free to reach out to me if you didn't receive them for whatever reason or if you have questions. Uh, my email is hannah at osbha.org, and I'm gonna be here for the rest of the day if you wanna chat. Um, but looking forward to supporting you all, and thanks again for all your hard work. I think that's all. Are there any questions?